Hello, I'm Bill Anderson. We're broadcasting live from the concert lobby here at the New Classical, 96.3 FM. And we're streaming video on our website. Go there now if you can, classical963fm.com. Now, today we're delighted to welcome an amazing group of musicians, a string quartet. Yes, but they defy categorization. They're veterans of Yo-Yo Ma's Silk Road Ensemble. They're going to be appearing tonight at the Glenn Gould Studio. But right now, they're here with us in the concert lobby. Here's Brooklyn Rider. Thank you. 
We're live in the concert lobby here at the new Classical 96.3 FM and streaming video on our website, classical963fm.com. I'm Bill Anderson. Our guests, Brooklyn Ryder, and that's violinists Johnny Gandelsman and Colin Jacobson, viola soloist Nicholas Kortz, cellist Eric Jacobson. Uh, Colin and Nick have joined me now. Thank you. That kind of gave a bit of an example of how broad the range is, 21st century, 20th century, and you even do some 18th and 19th century stuff, I know. That first piece, Second Bounce, is yours, Colin. Tell us the, the story behind. Well, we, we knew we were going to record Debussy's string quartet, and Debussy's a great model for us as a composer who had a very wide vi vision. He came from conservatory background, but he had an, a transformational experience at the Paris Exposition in 1889 and wrote his quartet after that. And similarly, in a way, uh, our experience in the Silk Road Ensemble has really um, widened our horizons and made us think, oh, with a string quartet, you can really do almost anything. So uh, we knew we were recording Debussy's quartet for our album, which is out now called Dominant Curve. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to write something for us because, you know, we're a quartet, we're a band, and that's what bands do <laughs> is they write stuff for each other. So um, it's loosely inspired by Debussy in terms of his... Um, playfulness and uh, his mesmerizing modalities. But that piece is also called Second Bounce. It's uh, loosely inspired by those crazy balls the, that you can get at you know, dispensers at a highway store okay, or a toy store. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Not just for and kids. <laughs> when you throw them, the first bounce is pretty crazy, but the spin all accumulates and the second one is really crazy. So that's the, the loose inspiration for that tune. I've been told, <laughs> Nick, that you guys are, are passionate about breaking down the expectations of a string quartet. What, what, what expectations? Well, I think what Colin was saying, like the string quartet to us is like this amazing vehicle for to be inclusive. And, and you know, we just played WC Quartet and like there's a model of somebody who is really inclusive in terms of his his uh, tastes. You know, he listened to music all around the world. He was friends with artists and writers. We have a community like that in Brooklyn of amazing people that we know, creative people. And we like to put that into the quartet as a kind of laboratory and do it. And, and you know, as a quartet, we are very inclusive. We love music from the 18th century and onwards. And we're creating all kinds of music. I have lots of friends who are writing amazing pieces for us. So it's. You want to include and engage the audience. How do you do that? Well, I think part of it is just in, in um, I, I think that we, we play in a, in a variety of venues and your body remembers that. So you can, we love playing in a, in a standard concert hall, but we love playing in a nightclub. And I think something about um, taking the formality out of the, the experience so that y you can actually have fun. I think you can have a lot of fun on whatever stage you're in. And you can also transform a club into a serious place. So I think it goes both ways. Now, you mentioned uh, the collaborations with other musicians, but visual artists, too, and you, you alluded to that with this community you have in, in Brooklyn. Tell us about some of these examples. I think one example that people could see right away is, is our website. We worked with an amazing artist named Kevorg Murad, who's, who's uh, from Armenia, uh, Syrian-born, but of Armenian heritage, and he helped design our website. But we also have, a, on that website, we have a gallery of artists um, uh, that, that feature the work of, of many amazing artists that are friends of ours from all different walks of life. Um, and we've also done a number of, of sort of live artistic collaborations with some of these people who do live painting uh, to music and, and, uh, and people who do video art to music, etc. So. so definitely no boundaries. Now, now your other violinist, Johnny, founded something called In a Circle. Tell us that story, if you will, Colin. 
Well, I think that that came out of wanting to create a, a unique concert experience in New York. And um, so we, we, uh, he started a series called In a Circle that was meant to be very inclusive of the audience. And um, then we had this quartet and, and we were ready to, to record an album. And so he thought, well, let's, you know, let's start a label. So Johnny started In a Circle Records, which has put out a couple of our records um, now. And did you guys meet in the Silk Road uh, Ensemble, or did you go there as a, a quartet, or what is that story? Um, no, we, uh, Nick, and I, well, actually Nick and I met 15 years ago. Eric's the cellist, Eric Jacobson, and he's my Your brother. brother yeah. So we've known each other for a while. Probably and, a uh, <laughs> Johnny and Nick went to school at Curtis together, right. and we all, uh, I met Johnny in an orchestra called Wild Ginger that he founded at that time, and uh, was a big, uh, you know, musical experience for all of us. So friendships developed about 15 years ago for, for all of us, but the quartet is about five years old. And what about the Knights? Isn't that you and your brother? Uh, yeah, well, the Knights uh, is in a way a spiritual heir of uh, Wild Ginger and uh, an orchestra that we all play in, and I think hopefully um, extends the kind of experimentation we do in the quartet to what you can do with an orchestra. How can you make an orchestra um, really an intimate experience and, and, and an immediate experience for an audience? Nick, tell me about the name. Brooklyn Rider. Where'd that Brooklyn come from? Brooklyn Rider. Well, let's see. Um, the short version of that is that um, we, we saw this uh, group of uh, artists in Munich called the Blue Rider Group. Um, and that was amazing. It had Kandinsky, but they also had artists like uh, musicians like Schoenberg and et cetera. And that seemed like an amazing community and inclusive community of musicians and artists. And it's, it felt very reminiscent of what we have in Brooklyn now. And of course, we're not from Munich. And the, the teens of the century were from Brooklyn and we're now. So it felt like Brooklyn Rider was kind of the natural choice. You're going to be at the Glen Gould Studio tonight at 8 p.m. I don't know whether you've had a chance to be, uh, be in the hall, but it's a lovely, intimate uh, performance space that I'm sure you'll enjoy beautiful. very much. You can get very close to the audience and involved. Uh, what's on the program? Well, the, the two pieces we just played are, are, well, the Debussy Quartet, we're playing the whole Debussy. We're also playing my whole piece, which Second Bounce is, is mm -hmm. one part of. It's a suite called Achilles Heel. And um, we're also playing a, a beautiful early John Cage piece called In a Landscape, which was arranged for us, also for our album, Dominant Curve, by our friend Justin Messina. And we're doing Philip Glass's Fifth String Quartet. I'll tell everybody where they can go to check on last minute tickets, but first I'm going to ask you to play a little bit more. What have you chosen for us next? Uh, next we're playing a, a, a tune that Cafe Tacuba, the Mexican rock band, did, and, and our friend Osvaldo Goliath, who was just in Toronto, um, created this uh, arrangement for string quartet, and the tune is called Morte Chiquita. And the next tune that we'd like to play after that is, is, a, is something that Colin and I heard on a journey to Iran to visit some of our musical friends there. Uh, in summer of 2005, um, and uh, and it's it's this amazing piece of folk music from Iran, which is probably more than a thousand years old, and uh, that's called Ascending Bird. All right, take your places right. if you will. Thanks, We're live in the concert lobby at the New Classical 96.3 FM, and if you're near your computer, log on to the website classical963fm.com so you can both see and hear our very special guests. Once again, here's Brooklyn Rider.
incredibly broad range of music, all wonderfully entertaining, awaits you tonight at the Glen Gould Studio when you attend the performance by our special guests, Brooklyn Ryder. Thank you, gentlemen. Come back anytime. We look forward to the performance tonight. Now, how do you get last-minute tickets? We well, go to the website, www.roythompson.com, and you click the link for events and tickets. Simple as that, and you'll find out. RoyThompson.com, events and tickets. Thanks again to Brooklyn Ryder. That's all for now, live from our concert lobby.